No Kevin Durant, no playoffs. Just when the Suns were number one in the West, Kevin Durant got hurt. He's going to miss multiple weeks with a calf strain. And to be honest, we don't know how long it could actually be. They said he's going to be reevaluated in two weeks. But reevaluated does not mean he's coming back at that time. He could, he always recovers pretty fast. But at the same time, they want him healthy for the playoffs. So they definitely don't want to rush him back. But can they stay afloat without him? Because if you've been watching the Suns or the NBA in general, Kevin Durant has low-key been one of the MVP leaders in the league. He's had multiple 30-point games, efficient as he always is, like super efficient on every shot. And he's just been, obviously he has help with Devin Booker, you know, and Bradley Beal and, you know, stuff like that. But Kevin Durant has been carrying the Suns. Without Kevin Durant, that team is not 8-1 and one, or whatever their record is. But they are literally number one in the West with him. And so now they have to go at least two weeks without him. And the thing is, they have a really tough stretch coming up. So, like, if he missed three weeks, for example, that puts them at just about December. Do you know who they have to play in that stretch? The Kings twice, the Timberwolves, the Knicks, the Warriors the Lakers, and there was a couple other teams in there that were pretty tough. The only team on their upcoming schedule for the next three weeks that, no offense, should be a guaranteed win with or without Kevin Durant is the Jazz because they have only won <laughs> one game so far. Not saying they can't win other games without Kevin Durant, but they are going to be playing tougher opponents. Like their schedule, again, no offense to the teams who are at the bottom. It happens to every team at some point. But they're not playing a three-week stretch of, like, the Jazz, the Wizards, and then the Jazz again. Like, that's not their schedule. So they could literally end up finishing, let's say, again, three weeks that he's out, one and nine. Like, I don't know if they will only get one win, but, like, they technically could finish, like, one and nine. And the reason that that is so significant is the West is loaded. We know this. You lose one game... And you're like in 10th place. And the West is not going to be separated by a lot of games. One extra loss could have you from being the 6th seed to the play-in tournament. Like, and I don't just mean the 6th seed to the 8th seed. You could be the 6th seed to the ninth seed. Why? Because if you have a tie and you, like a tie and a record, and you don't have the season series against that other team... Then you go down and it's just really complicated. So they literally cannot afford to lose Kevin Durant for this period of time. Now, obviously he's injured and we hope that he heals up soon and there's nothing they can do about it. He is going to be out. But this is just such bad timing and <laughs> it's so unfortunate for the Suns. Last season, they were riddled with injuries. And funny enough, Kevin Durant was the most healthy one on the whole team. I don't know if he missed more than like 10 games. Like... He played basically the entire season. And so you come into this season and everybody is pretty much healthy to start. Although Bradley Beal has some kind of elbow injury, but I think he's just like day to day. And so you're pretty much healthy to start. You get off to this hot start. You're number one in the West. And now you're out. You're without Kevin Durant for multiple weeks. And this is kind of the issue and story and question marks around the Suns is can they stay healthy? They have not yet proven to be able to for a full season for the playoffs. Like, they just haven't done it. Maybe this year will be different when they get to the playoffs, but so far, the story has basically been the same. Either they're not healthy or they get to the playoffs and they get bounced out pretty early. Like I said, Kevin Durant was playing some of his best basketball of his career, but also he's always, like, playing the best basketball of his career. <laughs> so, like, that's actually a compliment to him because... It doesn't matter where he is, when it is, he's going to shoot efficiently and score a lot. So, like, he's always playing the best basketball, to be honest. So, if I were the Phoenix Suns, I would be really, really concerned for the next few weeks without KD. Not because KD won't come back, because a calf strain is obviously not season-ending. But, one, obviously the concern of him re-aggravating it when he comes back, but not even that. Just that... They need to win these games while he is out. Because this can literally make or break their season. I know that sounds crazy when it's so early on. But if we go over to the Eastern Conference, looking at the Philadelphia 76ers, who Joel Embiid is coming back soon. And Paul George just came back, but they lost Tyrese Maxey. And you know what their record is? 1-6. in six. 
They have zero margin for error. So if you're the Phoenix Suns and you go one and nine, again, not saying they're going to go one and nine, but if that's what you do while Katie is out, imagine or think about how hard it's going to be for the 76ers who are dead last in the Eastern Conference to climb back up in the standings. Now think about it in the West where it's loaded and every single team is going to be separated by like one or two games. You can't do that. You can't really do that in the East either, but you definitely do have a little bit more breathing room because we expect, you know, it not to be as, you know, crazy in the East as it is in the West. So as the Phoenix Suns, you know, you can't afford to even go like 50-50, honestly, in these games. In my opinion, if they want to stay near the top of the conference, they have to at least go 6-4. and four. Obviously, ideally, they would want to win more than that. <laughs> But if you can go six and four without KD, then you're doing pretty good. Did I mention that they're playing OKC in that stretch? Because I just remembered. That may have been the team I didn't say earlier. And OKC is not going to be an easy win. So if you can go six and four, you can make up those four games without KD. Or those, let's say, two games. Because maybe with KD, you go eight and two. So really, you only lost two games. That you can make up. You can't really make up eight additional games Plus the fact that we don't know when KD is coming back, so it could be longer. Plus the fact that you're basically going to be putting more pressure on him when he comes back to carry the load again rather than kind of easing him back into it. Like, yes, he's going to be NBA ready and still be a starter playing starter minutes, but when you come off an injury, you do kind of want to ease your way back in. And if they're, you know, now ninth in the conference when KD comes back, he's going to put extra strain on and extra minutes to make sure that they go on a nice little winning streak. And that, again, could re-aggravate his injury. So hopefully KD comes back soon, and these next few weeks without KD will be very interesting for the Phoenix Suns. Like I said, this may be the season. Like, we may come back at the end of the season and remember this moment, these few weeks, and it determines the outcome of their season.